Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be reading today. Read along with me, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Read along with me. 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's, let's make a statement at the beginning. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. All scripture, all scripture, is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Whose righteousness? The Lord's righteousness that is imputed unto us, the saved, the saints of the church of God. Okay? That the man of God may be perfect, not sinlessly perfect, perfect in relation, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And remember, the Lord hath saved us apart from works, but saved saints are called thereunto to good works. To be, not to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are we proving that unto? Okay? And also, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Uh, something that the enemies really like to confuse. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 under verse 5. If any man teach otherwise, and can set not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, now stop. Some will say like, well, see, Brad, the Sermon on the Mount is doctrinally for, it, for us today. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It can't be. Because the Sermon on the Mount is not, there's no death, burial, and resurrection in it. It's all works-based. Faith that is mentioned one time on the Sermon on the Mount is in the form of a rebuke. Okay? What is this that Paul is referring to? Okay? And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Godliness being separate, other, God is holy, undefiled, okay? We are to live a life in godliness, okay? We are. We, we fail miserably at that, but we are to strive to that end, okay? That is what Paul is referring to. He is not saying anything that, like the Sermon on the Mount. The, the, the heretics love the Sermon on the Mount because it all glorifies them. Because during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Okay, it's all works. Don't believe these filthy, scum, scoundrel, sleazy believists who say it's by grace through faith in the kingdom of heaven. It's a, no, it's not. It's a lie. They're lying to you. Get away from them. Okay, but let's continue. He is Paul is reiterating godliness, okay? Instruction in righteousness, okay? Let's continue. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, Evil surmising. Oh, that gets a little to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, Brad, you're, you're striving about words. Okay, you explain to the lost person. You take 25, 30 minutes to try to explain to a lost person what's the difference between you, Christian, and the Christian that is a Catholic. Hmm? Go ahead. Go ahead. And, lo and look at, and watch them in their face be like a deer in the headlights. Okay? Anyway, continue. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds. What is corrupt mind? <laughs> One foot in the world and trying to have the other foot in, in, in the Lord, right? You cannot eat, you cannot, uh, eat at the devil's table and uh, the table of the Lord, okay? Give me a break, all right? Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Now, again, right away, right away.
way, everybody, when they think of gain, they think of the do re mi. And yes, that's encompassed in there. But what, what, there are other forms of gain. There are a lot of other forms of gain. Property, cars, <laughs> popularity, a near, a near cult-like following. Hmm? What other types of gain? Oh, I can have my cake, cake and eat it too. I don't have to worry, be, be worried about the work of prayer, as they call it, uh, or the work of repentance, as they call it, as they call it. Heresy, okay? To say that prayer is a work, repentance is a work. No, it isn't. Stupid, okay? But what other types of gain is there, huh? Oh, I can live like the world, be like the world, so long as I justify myself. Save myself. Hey! You can have your cake and eat it too. That's another form of gain. Okay? Proverbs. Chapter 4. Today's the fourth. The fourth proverb, personally to me, is a very dear proverb unto me personally. Because the fourth proverb was the death knell. Uh, the absolute uh, thing from the Lord that he showed me about getting out of the Kara Catholic cult. You know, the uh, oneness apostolic people that, that were in Crystal Puddle, Crystal Lake, Illinois. Um, uh, yeah, the one guy, um, the one pastor, I don't know what he's doing now. I tried to reach out to him. I wouldn't, would like to witness to him again. Um, his name was Tony. Um, Well-fed man. Um, he was very sincere, but he... Uh, he was, uh, you know, got to be baptized. You, you know, you can lose your salvation. Uh, the, the not dispensational, but whatever. The Lord in Proverbs 4, after he showed me the truth in Scripture about the water baptism thing. And water baptism is not a requirement for salvation. Okay? But this proverb means a lot to me. Because the Lord, the, the echo resonated in my head in my heart, in my spirit, when he said, get away from these people. Okay? We're going to go through Proverbs 4. We're going to have light expository here. Okay? Proverbs 4. 1 on to verse 9 to begin. Oh, if you got one of these uh, ribbon markers, use it. Little children, turn yourself from idols. Before we begin, I want to put this into your head before we continue. Idolatry. Idolatry, those who are looking to justify themselves will say of idolatry that it is always encompassed in like a statue or an object, a physical thing. But here's something that I want you to keep in your mind. What is the actual physical idol but an extension of what? You wanting to be your own God. You deciding what is good and what is evil. And whereunto, yes, all things are lawful for you. God is not forcing anything on you, neither is the devil. You have the free will to choose. But remember that. What is the actual physical idol? It could be a statue. It could be a person, spirit, soul, and body. It could be a place. It could be a certain day, whatever it is. You have free will. Yes, you do. But see, what is that idolatry? What is that idol itself? It is an extension of what? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You will be like the Most High. Hey, remember that. Proverbs 4. That got your attention, didn't it, huh? Good. We're reading to verse 9. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. Attend. Be ready to know understanding, departing from evil. Not justifying yourself and then doing whatever you 
bloody well want to because you've just saved yourself and you're free to do these things. No. Attend to no understanding which is what? Departing from evil. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Huh? The doctrine which is according to godliness. Being separate from that. That crosses every dispensational line. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. It's in Isaiah, it's in, uh, 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 what is it, 2 Corinthians, and it's in the book of Revelation, chapter 18. Three different dispensations. Okay? Okay? I was my father's, for I was my father's son, tender, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Okay? He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Different dispensation. Because during the law, under the law, it was faith and works. No eternal security was in the time of the law, under the dispensation of the law. Eternal security for us today is that seal, the Lord himself. There is eternal security for the 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, but that is it. Okay? The Lord, the Holy Ghost, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, God our Father, was not a permanent resident in under the dispensation of the law. Okay? When you got these sleazy, believist, heretic devils telling you that it was once saved, always saved under the law, they're lying to you! <sighs> He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Okay? Salvifically, we do not have to keep the commandments of God today in order to be saved. Stay saved. We don't. Okay? We don't. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that fact, and it is because of that fact that the devils can kind of have a little way to say, well, look at how they're behaving. That's why it's imperative for us brethren, saints, church of the living God to strive to live a godly life according to Scripture. Because the way we serve the Lord reflects Him. And these stupid devils who curse, who talk about oral sex in their streams and Nonsense! It's like, yeah, and then you got an atheist coming around. It's like, pfft, look at these idiots. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Get wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Get understanding, departing from evil. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Okay, and it has to be rightly divided. Okay, you got to rightly divide the word of truth or you become a jumbled mess like Mark the Messenger. Okay, <laughs> okay. Before you come around talking about James 2, please watch the video in the community section. Okay, that, 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 that is like the, that is the biggest one that seems people like to confuse and try to blend with today. Because, hey, hey, you sleazy believers, does faith save you today? Come on, come on. Not according to James. Well, you don't know, you don't understand. You're lying and bringing people to hell with you. Before you come around with James 2, dear friend, Check out the community section, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. If you don't want to watch that, you don't want to search the scriptures, then go ahead. Go ahead. And good luck at the great white throne of judgment, okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Let's read verse 5 again. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Verse 6. Forget her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Verse 7. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, 
is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. Right here, Proverbs 4 is probably, in my opinion, the clearest one that you can go to when you say, well, wisdom is, is described as a beautiful woman. Because remember, the woman is the glory of the man and man is the glory of God. Hey, you, woman, sisters, you got a problem with that? You got a problem with the Lord, okay? A sister, a true sister, doesn't really have a problem with that because they know what the, what the Lord says. They understand, okay? But hey, you feminazi, you got a problem with that? You got a problem with God. Check out the video that was done on stupid head Christy Burke, okay? Anyway, let's continue. It, uh, verse 6 again. Forsake her not, fear the Lord, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall promote thee. And when you have the fear of the Lord, and that is a jewel, a precious jewel in your sight, it leads on to understanding, departing from evil. And from departing from evil leads on to a knowledge, a pure knowledge. Where the knowledge that comes, the wisdom that is of what? Of Satan is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Go ahead. If it feels good, do it. Okay? Verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Verse 8, exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost, when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Job 28. You, you, you're talking about this. We can't get away from this. Job 28. Job 28. We will be reading verses 12 on to verse 20. But where shall wisdom be found? Well, hey, I mean... The wisdom that is first though is the what the wisdom that is not pure, the wisdom of the devil, the wisdom of man is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay, that's from James to also. Go find it, okay? But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living living in trespasses and sins, the price thereof, death, burial, and resurrection, the, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, okay? The depth saith, saith, it is not in me. The sea saith, it is not with me. And in Revelation chapter 17, about the whore, Roman Catholicism, the harlot, sitting on many waters, and the waters are likened unto peoples, nations, and tongues? Ah, okay. It cannot be gotten for, it cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Think of the <laughs> Shimon the sorcerer, who these twits, these sleazy believers say was a saved man. He wasn't. He wanted to buy he wanted to buy salvation more or less. He wanted the Holy Ghost. And what did Peter say? Your money perished with thee. Because you thought you could buy the gift of the Holy Ghost with money. Your heart's not right. You're not saved. And he proves it by what because what does Shimon do? That's in Acts chapter 8. Go look it up yourself. And what does he do? Does he take personal accountability and responsibility? No. Shimon the sorcerer. What does he do? He says to Peter. You pray for me. You pray for me. He doesn't take it on himself. He wasn't saved. But people, people, listen to me. Uh, you know, I, I respect atheists more than Christians most of the time, unfortunately. <laughs> but, you know, listen. Listen, okay? Shimon the sorcerer was not a saved man. Okay? He wasn't. All right? 
Watch out for these people trying to justify themselves by telling you that because he just believed, okay? If he were truly saved, he would take it upon himself to get on his knees and cry out to the Lord because he was just said, hey, you're not truly saved. But no, what does he do? You pray for me. You pray for me, okay? Watch out for this stuff. Okay. And see, most, oh, not most, a lot of the atheists that look into this stuff, it's like, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. When they say that they are something, but yet, by their fruits you shall know them, that they're not. I would have at least a little bit more respect for some of you if you at least, at least would attempt to live a godly life. I'm not saying that we're free to do these things because we're justified by ourselves. You know? Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 15 again in Job 28. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with gold, or uh, with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx, or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. Meaning, there is nothing of this earth that can compare unto the fear of the Lord. Nothing. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. From whence cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Skip down to 28. Oh, you know, you knew we were going to do it. And on to man, he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. What has become the idol in your life which is simply the extension of yourself? You think about that today. Okay? And of course, of course, while we are talking about this, we have to at least touch one verse in Proverbs 8, verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared with it. The lust of the uh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of life is not of the Father, but is of what? Let's instead of going off the cuff and quoting that, let's 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 go to that. John chapter two. First John, excuse me, first John chapter two. See, that's what Satan Satan offers you. Kind of a pacifistic way. It's like, hey, you can have you can have your little faith and do whatever and, and do whatever as well. You can have your cake and eat it too. It's a win-win situation. Yeah. Uh, first John chapter 2, 15 and 17, on to 17. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, excuse me. Okay? The lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And the Lord will have every man to be saved today. But he has a way that he has prescribed. And there are requirements. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness. <laughs> You have to be responsible and take responsibility and not hide, but be like, it's my fault. That's the hardest thing for a lost person to ever say, it's my fault. And you got to fear him. And as we're seeing, the fear of the Lord, it's nothing, nothing on earth excuse me, can compare to the fear of the Lord. Nothing. Let's go back to Proverbs uh, 4 and verses 10 now on to verse 17. 
Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Instruction now. Instruction. Okay, here has, here's how it works. Wisdom, fear of the Lord, leads to what? Understanding, departing from evil, which leads to a true knowledge. And how do you receive instruction for that knowledge? Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief. Yeah, these devils that are up at all hours of the night causing problems. That's all they do. Yeah. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall or manipulate people to fight their battles that they started. <laughs> yeah. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. And of course, we have to. Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7. 6 under verse 14. Uh, you, you know here in Proverbs 4 where it says, uh, Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Okay. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Flee fornication. Run. Proverbs 7. 6 on 2. What are we reading? to 14. For at the window of my house, I look through my casement. My house. Every one of us has uh, a house waiting for us in heaven. And when we die, we will be clothed with our house made, our house made without hands, our purified body. We'll touch more on that as we continue. Okay. I be and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths. A young man void of understanding. So, for at the window of my house, I looked through my casement, observing, okay? And beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Void of understanding. Void of departing from evil. Why do you think so many of these false faiths that are ultimately faiths on Satan are so appealing? We'll touch more on that in a bit, okay? Passing through the street near her corner. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the abominations of the earth, okay? And went the way to her house. And her house lieth, uh, 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 lieth at wait on every corner. Yeah, there's the the German Catholic Church over there, there's the Methodist down there, and whatever it is in your locality, I know like in Shalbina, there's, a, uh, there's water dogs, and then there's some other uh, Church, of Christ, Church of Christ, which is the water dogs, and then you have that other stupid one. But even there, in a small town like Shalbina, oh, and there's the, there was the Presbyterian one right down there, by the way, okay? Yeah. Yeah, even in the smallest of towns, most of them, at least you will see a presence of the whore. Okay, let's continue. Passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. This is going to be uh, contrasted, with every pun intended, in the next couple of verses that we will be looking at, okay? Uh, within Proverbs 4, okay? And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Look in your margin if there is a reference for Revelation chapter 17. There isn't in this one, but uh, look for it. Okay? Look for it. 
And behold, there met him a, a woman with the attire of an harlot, and subtle of heart, subtle, a woman, Roman Catholicism, subtle, the beast, who will be inhabited by Satan. Satan, that old serpent, the devil, the dragon, okay, Lucifer, okay. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Here's the verse. Now is she without. <laughs> now in the streets and lieth in wait at every corner. She's a whore. Roman Catholicism. And all her daughters. Okay? So she caught him. You don't have to. You don't have to. Repentance is a work. You don't need to be. No, no. You don't. Just believe and receive. So she caught him and kissed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings. With me, this day have I paid my vow. <laughs> yeah, and you, you know Deuteronomy 32 De Deuteronomy 32 28 on verse 33 De Deuteronomy 32 28 on the 33 for they are a nation void of counsel neither is there any understanding in them oh that they were wise in with fear of the Lord, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. And like Mr. Richling once taught about, you know, how your salvation is in the present tense. Well, yeah, we are once saved, always saved, but, but see, he taught his version of sleazy believism, which is being continued by two specific individuals that I am aware of, very well aware of that they teach his version of sleazy believism. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You are a uh, you are uh, you are a wrestling eye both of yous. Yes, you is. Yes, you is. But see, they don't know that, and you're lucky because I won't uh, re make reference or refer to the individual whose vi whose stuff on that is still up. If one of you brethren want that, to let that be known, it's like, hey, this is what Brad's talking about, I give you permission to put the links in there, okay? And you, who do, who do watch these things, okay, hey, okay, deal with it, all right? But let's continue, all right? For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them, departing from evil. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. It's all about now. It's all about now. Live it up now. Live it up now. Your best life now. You, oh, what a what what a great life you could have when you can have your cake and eat it too. You just save yourself and go on, go on living like a devil. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, someone who doesn't want to take responsibility for putting Christ on the cross that ain't broken up to himself thinking they're a good person, of course that's going to appeal to them. Why? Because it's all about their flesh. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their capital R rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? Contrast. See, us saints... We serve the capital R rock, Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. They, for their rock, lowercase r, I love the, I love the distinction here, is not as our capital, as our capital R rock. They don't serve the true God. They serve a, they serve a, a vile, excuse me, lumpies. They serve a vile, grotesque, abhorrent thing called the Trinity. <clears throat> Which is one God and three blue persons. That's satanic heresy. Okay? 
They don't serve the true God anyway. For their rock, lowercase r, is not as our rock, capital uh, R. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Again, I have to say it. Muslims, atheists, it, it's, it's entertaining to, I, and I, I haven't watched any in a while because, I, you know, I haven't. You, you, don't, you don't waste too much time on the daughters, but you go after the head, okay, which is Rome. But it, it's interesting and entertaining when you see the Muslim just shred and decimate uh, Trinitarians. It's quite entertaining. It's, and when you got idiots like David Wood, whose arguments make absolutely no sense to begin with, it's like, oh, wow. Anyway, right here. For their vine is the vine of Sodom, and the fields and of the fields of Gamara. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. Plural. If his ministers are transformed into ministers of righteousness. But a righteousness which is based upon what? Self-righteousness because you did something. Not the Lord's righteousness, but the righteousness that proceeds from themselves. You are a poor, wretched excuse for even a religionist. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of hasps. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Up the dosage, pal. Now, 18 on to verse 27 here in uh, Proverbs 4. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more onto the perfect day. Matthew chapter 7, Instruction in Righteousness. <coughs> Excuse me. No, only two. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Instruction in Righteousness. Sermon on the Mount is not doctrine for us today. That will be in the description box for you to consider. Okay? About the Sermon on the Mount. But, Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and there be few that find it. Verse uh, 18 again in Proverbs 4. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Hmm. Uh, John chapter 1. Check this out. John chapter 1. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Well, which Jesus. Right? Yeah. John chapter 1. We want verses 6 on to verse 13. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L light. In this context, capital L light is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. And remember in creation, let there be light. And God said... Let there be light in Genesis chapter 1. Okay? Yeah, let's continue. Okay. There came, the same came for a witness, we're in verse 7, to bear witness of the capital L light, that all men through him might believe. He, John the Baptist, was not that capital L light, but was sent to bear witness of that capital L light. That was the true light, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father 
which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. This does not mean that everyone is saved. Okay? That's not what that means. A person, spirit, soul, and body, that is alive. You know, you take a picture and you see the red thing with some of their eyes. Okay, that's the light reflecting the light of the eyes. Okay? Have you ever looked into the eyes of a dead person? A dead body? The light is not there. It is gone. It is not, that does not mean that it's the Lord with like some of these lost people who died. Okay? No, but see, the Lord gives us life. Hence, the light in the eyes. Okay? You've seen the, the eyes of a dead person. I'm, I'm referring to a specific murderer. You know what I'm talking about. The light's not there. That's what that's talking about in John here. It's not saying that all people are saved and they just don't know it. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. You're alive because the Lord has allowed you to live. Okay? He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, the Hebraic Jews, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Not angels in this context, no. Not in this context, no. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, we don't take it upon ourselves to save ourselves. It is by His grace, unmerited favor, through our faith. His grace comes first. And you, twits, you have no concept. Your, your grace that you offer is fake. It's not true grace. You have no concept of what true grace is. Because you've never been broke. Period. <laughs> Period. Period. Ipso facto. Done. Okay? No no concept. Uh, John 8, 12. One verse. John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Or case hell there. Because he's the one saying it. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life, a life in Christ. There's a difference here. Okay, we all have light in our eyes because of the Lord, because the Lord has allowed you to live. But see, if you are of him, he is the light. See, today you come to him on his terms, he saves you, he dwells in you. So you have light in your eyes because of life, but also you have the light, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you. But see, you got to remember, dear friend. you got to remember. <laughs> and no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And look at the smorgasbord of all the false that he offers you. Okay? Uh, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. This is an inexhaustible thing to speak about, especially with what might be coming within this very month. I've even seen today that yes, they're in talking about, they're talking about imposing again in some places. And at this point, as we addressed in the previous video, this nation here in America, this is a powder keg waiting to explode. Will that be the spark? I don't know. First John chapter 3, verses 1 out of verse 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Now, in Job, it talks about the sons of God. Those are clearly in context talking about angels. What does this mean? Keep reading. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. 
Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know a body made without hands, a glorified body, okay? But we know that when we sh when he shall appear, come on, brother, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. <laughs> and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Stop! The blessed hope. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus Christ, he is our hope. What is that hope that is in us? And let be, and every man be ready to give him a reason for the hope that is in him. You get it? The hope. Our, the hope. Our hope. The seal until the day of redemption. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? That's what that's talking about. People will come to 1 John chapter 3 and try to tell you, you've got to stop sinning. You can't do that. If that were the case, then Paul in Romans chapter 7 <laughs> uh, clearly missed that. That was before he was saved. You're on crack cocaine. No, it isn't. That's present tense. Him talking about himself, about doing the things he hates. Sinning. Okay? This, 1 John chapter 3, is talking about the Lord, that that hope that dwells within the saved believer. That's what that's talking about. Watch out for these devils who come around who say you got to stop sinning. And hey, I'll even give the sleazy believists some credit on this because some of the sleazy believists attack those people about with, the, you know, about the stop sinning sin uh, thing. And they're right. They're right. They are. Uh, I do believe even uh, Mr. Sunk and I uh, even refuted a couple of the people who were like, you got to stop sinning. I believe even he had a couple of videos rebuking them, and they, they were, yeah, yeah, okay? You, you can't stop sinning while your spirit and soul are housed, excuse me, in this. It's impossible. It's impossible, okay? That's not what this is talking about. The hope that dwelleth in us. Okay, and see, and every man that hath this hope in him, the seal until the day of redemption, our Lord Jesus Christ purifieth himself. Well, the Lord purifies us. Yes, but remember, he's not holding a gun to our head, neither is the devil. we got to make the right choices to not put our hands on filth, to turn our eyes away, to not run like uh, goats to a slaughter. we got to make the right choices, friends. Okay? Okay? All right. Now, back to Proverbs 4. Okay? Verse 19. And you like, well, Brad, what are we, why did we read that? But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more on to the perfect day. That perfect day is what? <laughs> First John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Uh, when we get redeemed or when we die, we're going to be perfect then. Because we'll be like him without sin. That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Do you get it? Uh -huh. Let's continue. The way of the wicked is as darkness. <laughs> they know not at what they stumble. Now that's interesting. They do, but they don't. They don't know what they're going to be giving themselves over to because, hey, I've got a license. License to what? As James Bond has a license to kill, they got a license to give a little here, a little there. Don't worry about it. You can just do whatever. Don't tell me that's not what you preach. It is. You lie and your breast stick. I can smell it over here. Okay, that is what all of you, okay, you demonstrate it in your speech, your conversation, in your ridiculous live streams. You do. Okay? 
atheists can figure that one out. Okay? All right? But John 12. John 12. Not Timothy. John 12. John 12, 35 and 36. Not 13, Brad. <laughs> John 12, 35 and 36. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Ah, hey, who knows what kind of sin I can get into today. Now granted, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. This is instruction in righteousness. Okay? The, the heretic false devil, they think, well, I'm going to go to heaven. Uh, your heaven is hell, actually, pal. But it's like, hey, I don't know what's going to happen today. I might, who knows what kind of sin I can get into. While ye have the light. Now see, again, context. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He was talking about while he was there physically present. For our instruction and in righteousness in our lives, as it is appointed unto men once to die and after the judgment, today in this dispensation for our instruction and in righteousness, while we are alive, okay, walk ye while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. And see, understanding, okay, understanding departing from evil. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Hide himself from them. Because they wanted to indulge. They wanted to worship themselves. See how that works? Okay? And also, Matthew chapter 6, instruction in righteousness. Okay? Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And, and no marvel, because Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Hmm. How can darkness be light? Reference unto Satan. As he flashes the world in a moment of time to you via hell phone. You're walking outside and you see a woman dressed like a whore or a man dressed like he shouldn't be. Okay. And what are we reading? Verse 24? Uh, uh, no, 22 and 23. Okay. The light of the body, I, I, I messed that up, excuse me. Verses 22 and 23. The light of the body is of the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Okay? Single. Think about that. We saints, the straight way, our eye is single on Jesus. But see, the devils, their light, their eye is also single. But what? That light in them is what? Darkness. Their eye, while they, while we are straight, their eye is single, yet going from side to side, seeing what kind of devilment they can get into. Now, verse 23, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore that light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And also, while we're in the um, gospel accounts, John 3, John 3, 19 on the 21. <laughs> These guys who say that John 3.16 is the gospel for today. It's not. Uh, there's a place for John 3.16 in your witness unto people. Yes, there is. That's not what you start with. Okay? If anything, it's uh, an example. Okay? But John 3.19 and 21. And this is the commendation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. 
neither cometh he to the light. Why? Lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Again, Shimon the sorcerer. Shimon the sorcerer. You pray for me. You pray for me. See, Shimon the sorcerer didn't want to go to the Lord himself. Because you know what happens when you do, and you are serious, and you are repentant, broken of your self-righteousness, which Shimon the sorcerer was not, okay? And you're being a man or a woman. It's, yes, Lord, my hand held the hammer, and my hand held the nail that put those into you, okay? Okay? That's contrition. That's true scriptural repentance. Okay? But see, she won the sorcerer, didn't want to face that. Because the Lord has this habit of when you sincerely seek him, he's going to be one thing you lack, buddy. And see, every single saint knows that. But see, the fake... You're being too extreme. Extreme. That's not my Jesus. <laughs> You're right. It's not. It's not. You're right. Bravo. I'll give you a bozo button later. Okay? But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, and his deeds be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Wrought in God. And see, son, you're going to experience that. You, you, the Lord uses you, and um, the Lord uses you to guide. And remember, always have the scriptures on you. I know you do. Uh, but, uh, you know, you'll see something so promising. And then they, they veer off. And then sometimes you'll be having, it's like, dude, what happened? You were given, you were given fact. You were given truth. Yeah, but... Yeah, but I, I, I. Go back now to Proverbs 4, continuing, picking up at verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. You read any scripture today? Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Uh, I personally have started now as I read the corresponding proverb for the, the day, the fourth, and uh, like today's the fourth, Ecclesiastes 4, Song of Solomon 4. And now I'm starting myself personally, as Brother Alexander does, uh, reading Romans. Uh, I'm going to start doing that now, uh, you know, because, hey, turn anywhere, it's all good, right? But anyway, for, okay, my son, let's read verse 20 again. My son, attend to the words of my mouth. Attend to my words, excuse me. Let, incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, okay? Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Okay? For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Issues of life. And someone who trusts in his own heart is a fool. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all else. Who can know it? Okay? Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, 22 unto 32. Ephesians chapter 4, 22 unto 32. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man being transformed, okay? Be not conformed 
to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Verse 23, okay? That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, Adam, okay? Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You don't look for justification of, okay, how can I get away with doing that and still be a Christian? Well, with Christianity, that's very simple. But isn't it, see, that's a form of justification. Just as if I, okay? You, you want to get yourself as close as you can, maybe dangling a little over there to that cliff of how much devilment you can get away with, right? And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. See, it's a choice. You're set, you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him. You scream out to him and call on his name, and he saves you. He seals you. He's in you. He will lead you and guide you. Not by force. Okay? Or you're a robot. He's not going to do a part from your free will. Okay? He's not. It's, it's not how it works. Despite what Calvinists want to say, despite what anyone wants to say. Okay? Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. What happens if you do that? Neither give place to the devil. Now, so see, Brad, sin not. Okay. Romans chapter 7. You people, you idiots. Look in the box. You know, some of these guys who are like, you got to stop sinning. I don't sin anymore. Number one, you just lied. And number two, you're in pride. Go away. Paul missed that memo. Okay? Okay? Whenever people, atheists, you even, when you come across one of these Christians, say they, they don't sin anymore, laugh at them. And just, and you're an atheist? Say this to them. Okay? Uh, you lied and you're full of pride. Those are two things your God hates. Atheists, you, next time, you, if you ever come across one of these Christians, like, you gotta stop sinning, like Ray Comfort, stop sinning, stop sinning, okay? Throw that at them. See how they react. Probably take you to 1 John 3. Probably will, okay? But what happens? You're angry. I'm wrong getting angry. And you sin. Yeah. And you go to bed angry. You're giving place to the devil. And personally, my memories. You can't unsee. I will put no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of those uh, that turn aside. I can't unsee the things I have seen. You no, know, a brother asked me, it's like, well, Brad, what, what, what's, what's your biggest, you know, what's the thing that a dear brother asked me that? And I'm like, my memories. And I, I know I've been forgiven of them. Of course, I've been forgiven of them. Yes. But I can't unsee the things I've seen. You know, the POV thing, point of view. I can't unsee. I can't. And if the devil is allowed, or a devil, allowed to mess with me, there's always a correlation to a memory. Always. And it's, it's oh, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. And going on 50 years, 
I've seen things that some of you won't praise the Lord ever see. Okay, I've seen things like that. And like I said, I can't unsee these things. And when you do things contrary to the Lord, when you sin in anger, you go to bed angry or anything, when you, in general, give place to the devil, you open yourself up for attack. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. This is good. I'm working with my hands to give to you that which is good, the scriptures. Okay? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What are we reading to? Verse 32, end of the chapter. But hold on. Now, corrupt communication, yes, encompasses profanity. Which, again, you know, the, the sleazy believists, I don't, I, I, you know, I got, unfortunately, I watched, you know, some live streams by these disgusting, you know, I mean, four-hour ones. And it's like, well, Brad, yours are two hours long. We're going to scripture, okay? You know, but it's like, and they they use profanity, and it, it, it's like they don't even skip a beat. You know, it, it's it's you know, it's it's full of wonder, okay? You know, that's you know, Mr. Sunken Eyed, you know, and I I haven't watched any of his stuff in a long time, actually. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but, uh, you know, at, at least he tries. Okay? At least he tries. At least. Okay? At least. It's not saying much. The guy's going to hell and leading people to hell. But at least. Okay? But see, corrupt communication, while it does encompass profanity. What is corrupt? Telling someone that today, when it is finished, that they have to keep the law today to be saved. Okay? That's not calling the law corrupt at all. No. But salvation, salvifically, it is not pertinent to be saved today in this dispensation rightly divided in the word of truth. So, in trying to bring what is salvific from another dispensation and make it applicable today, that in and of itself is a corruption. The, the, the law is not corrupt, God forbid, no. But when you try to take something that is salvific for another dispensation and make it applicable today, that is a corruption of it is finished. Or else why did Christ die? So, corrupt communication. Someone trying to bring something from another dispensation and make it applicable for today. Okay? Something that is contrary to the salvation that is today. Corrupt communication. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed, once saved, always saved, unto the day of redemption. That's the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. The perfect day. The blessed hope. Let all bitterness and wrath ah, and anger ah, and clamor, calamorous. Like I said, I, I, I always oh, associate with clamorous Pots, pots and pans clinking together. You know that obnoxious sound like my dog Xena when she barks. It's like, it, ah, you know, <laughs> okay. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking more direct, more direct meaning of profanity and stuff be put away from you with all malice. 
and be ye kind one to another, context here, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Okay? For example, there are brethren out there who I consider brethren who, and I, who they and I do not get along. It's unfortunate. There's a guy who lives in a state next to me, um, uh, an affable man, um, who I, I do believe is saved. I do believe is saved. He's got, got his issues, but I mean, he and I don't get along, unfortunately. He, I believe he's my brother, okay? I do. I, I do, um, but we don't get along. But see, as my brother, even though I don't get along with him and he don't get along with me, if you were to come to me and, Brad, I need you. As my brother, I would, I would be there for him in whatever capacity I could be, okay? And remember, forgiving people today is not a requirement. People, unless you forgive, you won't be forgiven. Uh, uh, that's uh, hold on I'm writing that down because that's on the uh, the backup channel uh, people will go to that well you gotta be you gotta forgive or else you won't be forgiven that's for the kingdom of heaven when it's all works you're, one, you're sealed until the day of redemption today once saved, always saved. If you go the way he has prescribed and he saved you, uh, you're saved by him, his grace, through your faith. Okay? Not of yourself. You're, you're eternally secure. You don't have to forgive in order to be forgiven today. You ought to because if you don't and you hold on because it says, let all bitterness, if you hold on to a grudge and won't forgive someone, bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, and you're supposed to be an ambassador for Christ and you have bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor? The way we reflect, the, the way we serve God reflects Him. So, while not pertinent to salvation, if you are a saint and you are holding on to a grudge and won't let it go, it can cause bitterness, it can cause wrath. Anger and clamor and evil speaking even. It's not gonna it's not pertinent necessary for salvation. See, when it is, is during the kingdom of heaven, rightly dividing the word of truth, where it's all works. Okay? Faith is very quickly, off the cuff here, very quickly, Hebrews eleven, verse one. Okay. What is faith is clearly defined in scripture. You don't need Mr. Webster, bless his heart and soul, and I do not mean that in the southern way, okay? Faith is clearly defined in Scripture with one verse. Verse 1 in Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jesus Christ in the kingdom of heaven is going to be physically sitting on a throne. You do not need faith when you will be able to see Jesus Christ on a throne, physically, personally. It is not by grace through faith in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? It is not. All right? Watch out for these idiots, these filthy devils that appeal to your flesh, saying it is by grace through faith from the Garden of Eden unto eternity. Okay? Watch out for that. They're lying to you. Okay? Please. Please. Watch out for that. Watch out for that. Okay? Finish this up in Proverbs 4. Verses 25 on to verse 27. Let thine eyes look straight on. Straight is the gate. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder, that means to think, the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. 
Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Broadway, remove thy foot from evil. And again, idolatry. Idolatry, dear friend, yes. Worshiping a th an object, an idea, a principle, a person, spirit, soul, or, or body, a certain day, uh, whatever it is, okay? But at the root, what is that? What is it? It's an extension of what? Yourself, isn't it? Think about that. And what happens when you're doing that? You are being what? A setter forth of false gods. Because what is the ultimate form of idolatry? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And as we are told in Scripture to mortify, kill the flesh, Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13. Now, the question is, well, how come we're not doing this today? Uh, this was a different dispensation. Uh, this was under the law. Uh, today, it is by grace through faith. Okay? <laughs> uh, we don't do this today because vengeance belongs to the Lord. Okay? Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 on to verse 5. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Hey, look at me. Look at my life. I'm having the time of my life, man. I can, I can go to Hollywood movies. I can listen to rock music. I, I can, you know, hey, I can, you know mess around with a woman over here if I want to. I could do a little this, a little that. And all I got to do is like, thank you, Lord, for saving me because I just believed. Hmm, what about that? Of course, of course, context. You know, someone wants you to go and worship a Mary statue or a Buddhist statue, okay? Or what? Or some, one of the many gods of Hinduism, okay? Yes, but you got to remember, what are those extensions of? You shall be as gods, no good and evil. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. Another example is love is love. God doesn't care if you're a man and in love with another man or a woman in love with another woman. Love is love. What is it? That's idolatry. But it's sin, of course. Uh, abhorrent sin that God hates, yes. But what is that an extension of? He shall be as God's no good and evil. For the Lord your God proveth you. Proveth you. He doesn't need to. He, he knows it's for your benefit. You know, he who thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. You know, when the Lord uses you uh, in a situation to correct a brother or sister or uses you to lead uh, someone onto him, okay, as a vessel me for his use, you know, you got to be careful not to get so, I, look at me, I've been doing this for years and years and years and years. I feel like Paul for all the people I've went to the Lord. You got to be careful with that. Okay? The Lord proveth you. He knows what's... He, he's outside of our time. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows everything. You're not going to... It's not Him that you're proving anything to. Well, Abraham, that knowing... Now I know that you fear the Lord. He experienced that thing with Abraham. The knowing was an experience. Okay? It wasn't that God didn't know. If God doesn't know something... Mr. Lying Fart, okay, uh, why serve him? Oh, but then again, you get involved with the Satanic, Roman, uh, Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic Trinity, you go to hell. No, God proveth you. 
You think you're standing, huh? You think you're, you think you're right? Are you examining yourself? To know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You say you do. Oh, but do you? I praise the Lord. I praise the Lord that the Lord would not does not allow the devil, or, or a devil, excuse me. The devil is not omnipresent. He can't be in two places at the same time. Personally, I believe that the devil is over at Rome. You know, Lucifer himself. You're, we're dealing with his with angels, his angels. You know, devils and whatnot. Okay, but um, I praise the Lord that the devils aren't allowed to do certain things because, oh boy, oh boy. Like you know, the devil, the accuser of the brethren. Let me put this in front of Brad. Let me put this in front of Brad, because you know if I put that in front of him, he's going to have a heck of a time. But, and our Lord is merciful. So no, 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 you're not going to do that. That's why it's important for you to understand what it is about Job. Okay, You see a real clear picture of how the uh, Lord operates with his own and how he will allow the devil to do things okay, to those that are his. I was like, go ahead and touch his uh, bones and his flesh. Don't kill him. You know, some of you out there, saints, you get a little high and mighty, okay? I can say this to you because I got a pride problem myself. And I got a bad ticker, okay, with horrible arteries and stuff like that, okay? But, um... See, it makes that thorn in the flesh a little bit more meaningful, more beautiful. Because if you get a little high and mighty on yourself, fear what the Lord might allow the devils to do, to see if you really do, if you really are all that you think you are. Again, are you examining yourselves? Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve, and serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Now again, like I said, a different dispensation. Today we don't do that because it is the Lord who will repay. Okay? All right? And again, like we are told in scripture, to mortify, kill. What? This. Okay? Flesh. Our flesh. Get away from it. Don't indulge it. Don't be like what Oscar Wilde said. Best way to get rid of a temptation is give in to it. Yeah. As you're riding the highway to hell. Yeah. Yeah. How'd that work out for you, pal? Yeah. So, and what does the minister of righteousness today, who comes from that angel of light, what what is the foundation of all they offer you? Right here, flesh. Every single time. It's flesh. And we're told to kill our flesh. Mortify. And I agree. Morte. Dead. Mortification. Put down, what do you do to, uh, uh, like I did to Fritz, I put him down. I, I didn't do that, I couldn't do that, but, you know. You shall walk, uh, where, uh, yeah, verse 5. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, speaking corrupt words, corrupt communications, which brought you out to the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Okay? Judges chapter 6. I want to show you now an example of people giving themselves over to these false gods. 
Judges chapter 6, 22 under 32. This is Gideon during the time of the judges. You can go ahead and read the context on your old time. Read the whole chapter. And when Gideon, 22 under 32. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Excuse me. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. God, peace. Okay? Um, that is not a title for God. Um, that's a place. Okay? It's not a title for God. It's a place. Okay? Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the uh, Abizarites. Jehovah Shalom is not a title for God. It is an actual place. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord checked this out. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, the Lord said unto Gideon, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. And you look at Baal, uh, the extension of Baal is Catholicism. The altar boys all the sin that they have, all the sexual perversion, because the Baalite cult was exactly that. And build an altar unto the Lord. Hey, wait, wait, get out of there. Get out of there. Get, get out of there. Book. And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the ordered place, and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down. So, Gideon was commanded to do what? Tear down the altar of Baal. Tear down the fake. Colossians. I believe that's Colossians. It might be uh, Philippians. We'll find it really quickly. In the Pauline epistles. It is... Uh, that's Colossians, isn't it? Yes, Colossians 3. Colossians 3, verses 5 and on to 7. Oh, let's, uh, let's do 5 on 8. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is all the idolatry. Everyone said, well, covetousness is idolatry. Yes, it is. All of that encompasses idolatry. Why? Because what is the source of it? I, 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 me, me, me. Again, what is the, the base of idolatry? You. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience? Those who reject the gospel, not saved saints who just mess up. Okay? In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. See right there, verse 7. Okay, it's telling you, when you were lost. Okay? But now ye put ye, but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Again, encompassing what? Foul language, but a mortification of your flesh. So things that are, are pertinent unto a fleshly thing. Save yourself by your own belief. Okay? Back to judges. Then, verse 27, Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was, because he feared his father's household, and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, he did it by night. And that's interesting, too, because he feared his father's household and the men of the people. He didn't do it publicly. Remember Nicodemus? Dear, sweet Nicodemus, who I believe is in heaven. He came to Jesus by night. And that's a stigma that's branded to uh, Nicodemus. He who came to Jesus by night. 
Well, Gideon surely could have been killed. Yeah, he could have. He could have, sure. But don't you think the Lord who, you know, is like, hey, Gideon, go do this. Uh, don't you think he would have protected him a little bit? I understand sometimes we've got to do things because of repercussion. But you know what, brethren? Sometimes we just got to take a stand and trust on the Lord. And if we say, hey, time to come home. Hey, great. Okay, good. Okay, and if not, we got to go forward in that confidence of him, in him. Let's continue. And when the men of the city, I like this. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down. And the grove was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who hath done this thing? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, hath done this thing. Look at this. Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. The Lord says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. The Lord himself is very capable, himself, of avenging himself. He will use mankind. Yes, he will. He will use the elements. Like uh, like uh, years ago, that thing in Haiti. Uh, Haiti, uh, the Haitian people in a hole with the witchcraft and voodooism, voodoo stuff that goes on over there, and they were decimated by uh, tidal waves and tsunamis and stuff like that. Yes, God can use natural elements and whatnot, yes. But remember... The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is very capable himself of taking upon himself to avenge himself. Satan can to an extent, but not like the Lord. Remember, the magicians of Egypt could uh, duplicate three. What is it? The swallow, uh, turning their rods into um, serpents, water, uh, and the blood and the calling of frogs, but they couldn't take dust, dirt, and turn dirt into an actual form, living thing, or into um, pestilence, mites, um, and stuff like that. Okay? They couldn't do that. Remember that. Remember that. About the dreamer and who bring a sign. Remember that. Besides, we walk by faith not by sight anyway. Okay? And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Will ye save him? <laughs> he that will plead for him, let him be put to death, whilst it is yet morning, daytime. If he be a lowercase g, God, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. Ooh. But then you're piping smoking, huh? Therefore, on that day, he called him Jerabel, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he hath thrown down his altar. Uh, yeah, 1 Kings 18? 1 Kings... Oh. 1 Kings 18? <laughs> 25 on to 30? Mm. And Elisha, Elijah, Elijah, not Elisha, Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullet for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many. And call on the name of your gods. Gods, plural. Oh. Oh. One God in three persons, huh? <laughs> yeah. And call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullet which was given them, and they dressed it. And they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us! But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon, that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is God. 
Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, pursuing, or he taketh a journey, or pre-adventure, he sleepeth, and must be awake. And, cry, and they cried aloud, and cut themselves after their manner, with knives and lancets, till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass, when midday, when midday was passed, that they prophesied unto the time of the evening, uh, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Prophesied. Saul, you read about Saul, how he laid butt naked and prophesied in front of Samuel. Now, what kind of prophesying was he doing? Was he giving revelation of what God was saying? No. What kind of prophecy, prophesying was he doing? I believe that he was doing what you see these charismatic Pentecostals do. The Kundalini uh, serpent and the spine, which Catholics have done. There are videos you can see uh, Roman Catholics doing the... Blah, 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 blah. I personally believe Saul... And these prophets were doing exactly that. That nonsensical blah, 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 that you see the Pentecostal charismatics do today. That's what I believe they were doing. I believe that the prophesied there, uh, that, yeah, they were bleeding like a stuck pig, jumping up and down, exhausting themselves. I, I believe that. Like Saul, who laid on the ground butt naked and prophesied. I believe they were doing... That's what I believe they were doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. And it came to pass... Okay. Uh, verse 29 again. And it came to pass when midday was passed, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor... nor there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded it. And Elijah said unto the people, it's like, Elisha, oy vey, oy vey. Okay, you guys happy? Look at you idiots. He mocked them. Rightfully so. It's like, look at you. You're bleeding like crazy. You're speaking unintelligible jibber-jabber. And look, and look at how he approaches this. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near to me. Are, are you done listening to this stupid stuff? Are you done? Huh? When's enough? Huh? When is enough enough? How long are you? How long you be hope between two opinions? Huh? Come near to me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Good example for us, brethren. When you come across a Christian who, well, I'm saved because I just believe. That's good for you. Very proud of you. That's very nice. Yeah. The, the, I believe in someone, there's one God, and you, you believe in three persons that make one God. Okay. But yeah, the devils also believe in tremble. Hey, good for you. Are you done? Are you done with that? Can I tell you about the true Lord Jesus Christ, God, who is our Father? No? Okay, go on. Go on. Go on. Cry to your Trinity. Where is he, huh? Go ahead. He'll be here during the time of Jacob's trouble. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. So, yeah. And see, this was all fleshly. They cut themselves. They went, Obey, hear us. Ezekiel 28. The extent idolatry is just the extension of you wanting to be your own God every single time, without an exception. Without an exception. Ezekiel 28, verses 1 and verse 9. Ezekiel 28, verses 1 and verse 9. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man. Say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, 
You know, and you read on to verse 19, uh, it's talking about Satan with every precious stone is his covering. He was defiled by his brightness. He, you know, he was a little proud of himself. Satan's sin was pride. Okay? Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a god. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I'm delivered to, I can go ahead. All things will offer for me. Right? I am a god. I sit in the seat of God. In the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man. And not God. I'm saved because I just believed. You're a man. You're not God. God's the one who does the saving. Not you, jerk. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, huh? There's no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thy wisdom, thy understanding, earthly, sensual, devilish, thou hast gotten these riches. Do you not consent to the doctrine that is according to godliness, but gain is godliness? Yeah. And has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures by thy great wisdom, earthly, sensual, devilish, and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. And at the great white throne, you, <laughs> wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. And what is man? He's dirt. At the great white throne of judgment, some of you guys think you're going to be indignant. It's going to go, you're going to pisseth down your leg, boy. First Samuel chapter 5. This one has to do with the sons of Ishmael. But I want to read this to you. It's only 12 verses. But it's, it's, it's interesting. Because they acknowledge. And, th and this is the point of why we're going to look at this. Because they acknowledge the Lord as the true God. But yet they still want to hold on to their God which they acknowledge that the God who is is greater than their own. You, you, you wrap your head around that for a little while yourself. But let's read this. 1 Samuel chapter 5. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it, to, and brought it from Eben Ezer unto Eshtod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by da Dagon. You know the fish helmet that uh, the Pope wears? And when they of Estad arose on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. Dagon, an idol, fallen down before the Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow, will bow. Okay? Satan himself needs permission to attack the church of the living God. Satan is a created being. Satan is going to give an account of himself to God at the great white throne of judgment to be cast into the lake of fire like all of you who follow him. 
And what happened? Falling down, they put him up again. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. Every knee will bow. Okay? And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left. The head, the, the pyramid structure, okay? The pyramid structure with the head and the hands held down like that with these false idols that uh, represent the pyramid structure, which we addressed in the previous video, okay? Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashtod until this day. Roll that around in your head. These people who knew, they knew that their Dagon was nothing compared to the Lord. But yet, they still went after what they knew was inferior to the actual true God. How many of these people knowingly going after devils? Knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth, that's a, see that, that, what we're looking at is a prime example of someone who has gone past the point of no return. When they can know and acknowledge the true Lord, but yet will continue on in the worship of their own little God that they have to bear up. Do you get it? Yeah, let's continue. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them with emrods, even Ashdod and the coasts thereof. Emrods. Um, I believe those are what we call hemorrhoids today. Someone can correct me on that if you want to, please. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon our God. Get the gravity of that. Again, these guys, number one, they realize that God is the true God, more powerful, and they realize that he is afflicting their God that they got to bear up. But yet they won't submit to the true God. You talk about an example of someone who has gone past the point of no return. You filthy scumbag book. Excuse me. Let's continue. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of God, the ark of the God of Israel, excuse me, shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon our God. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. And they carried the ark of the God of Israel about thither. And it was so that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great, and they had emrods in their secret parts. Warts, whatever, I don't know. But we know in their secret parts. Use your imagination. The Lord, and because Dagon, Baal, perversion, okay? <clears throat> Therefore they sent the ark of God to Ekron. And it came to pass as the ark of God came to Ekron that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought about the ark of the God of Israel to us, to slay us and our people. Keep in mind, while all this is going on, these people didn't repent of their worship of their false god, which they knew wasn't the true god.
So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel. Yes, get the true God away from us. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy unto us deceits. That get, uh, get thee out of the way that we may continue in what we want. And let it go again to his own place that it slay us not and our people. For there was a des deadly destruction throughout all the city and the hand of God was very heavy there. And the men that died not were smitten with the emeralds and the cry of the city went up to heaven. And you can read chapter 16 and they sent little uh, idols little molten uh, emeralds of gold and mice and stuff. As it's like, hey, okay, get, 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 go, give him his gold, give him and send him off. Okay, you can read that in 16. But see, the point is, Philistines were given testimony, witness that, hey, you know, they had to bear up Dagon. And Dagon <clears throat> fell flat before the Ark of the Lord. You get what that means. And even in light of all of that, they wanted to they wanted to cling to they wanted to cling to their false little God. And they said, get get God, get the real God away from us. Idolatry is the extension of you wanting to be your own God. Period. Psalm 146 and we'll be done. Psalm 146. Uh, no, we won't be done. Uh, we're going to end this appropriately. Psalm 146. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to the earth. In that day, in that very day, his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his hope, whose hope is in the Lord his God. And today you come to the Lord on his terms, you have that hope in you. Which made heaven, which made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Isaiah 44. Verses 6 on to verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Hmm. I am the first, and I am the last. Beside me, there is no God. And who, as I, shall call, and shall declare it, and set it in order for me? Since I appoint the ancient people, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them shew unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. There is no God, is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God, I know not any. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth 
and your wife. Let's read, excuse me, let's read verse 9. They that make graven images are all of them vanity. And the graven images are an extension of what? And their delectable things shall not profit. Profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not nor know that they may be ashamed. <laughs> Verse 10. Who hath formed a God like Dagon that had to be born up? Or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Revelation 21. Then we'll be done. Then we'll be done. One on to verse 8. This is after the great white throne of judgment. This is the seventh, I believe, and teach, that this is the seventh and final dispensation in Scripture. Eternity. A new heavens and a new earth where no more sin is. Because you read in uh, 20 about the, um, uh, the great white throne where Satan himself is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Okay? That's the, the end of sin. That's the end of death and evil. So, 21, I believe, is describing the seventh and final dispensation. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. You, you guys with your stupid gap theory, um, right there, this is the first earth that we're on presently. The gap theory guys say that there were between, uh, what is it, verses, whatever, that there are millions and billions in years, and the Lord destroyed the earth then and made another one. So they, according to that gap theory nonsense, that's, they say that this is a second earth. No, this is still the same first earth. Okay? Anyway. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, as it was in the Garden of Eden, before the fall. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, and the wages of sin is death. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat on the throne, singular, said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Little children, I want to I want to get that right because I, I think I messed that up. What uh, John, in his thing in First John chapter one, little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. That's going to be it for this video today. Um, like I said, uh, fourth proverb means a lot to me. And I was just reading that today, and, and the Lord just... 
Thank you for watching this if you do. Hopefully this has been helpful to some of you or anything like that. Thank you. Thank you for those of you who pray for us, love us, we pray for you. You know, brethren, there are some of you, brethren, who um, we're way overdue with speaking. Look, I love you. And though we don't speak often, I, I don't forget about you. We don't forget about you. Every day we talk about you. We say your name to the Lord. You're always on our hearts. We might not just we might not talk as often as we should. I take my that my fault, but um, please don't think you're forgotten. Please. We love you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.